Hmm. It has two wheels and two sources of power. Goes from zero to 192 in one shift and can take you places just standing still. DX100 synthesizer. Anything's possible. Hello and welcome back. As there seems to be a mess from DX7s lately, I've decided to do not one, but two videos on inexpensive FM alternatives, starting out with this little guy from my personal half rack synth collection, the very tiny and very 80s Yamaha FB01. The FB01 is part of a family of FM synths that was, fitting to our topic here, introduced as a budget alternative to Yamaha's smash hit FM synth DX7. While the mighty DX7 offered six operator FM synthesis, the DX9, which was the first member of this family, only offered four operators. For those new to the FM game, these operators are basically waveform generators that can modulate each other in different ways, creating something that is in some way exactly in other ways more than the sum of its parts. These different paths of modulation are referred to as algorithms in the Yamaha FM world. So the more operators, the more algorithms, the more sonic variety. While things can get famously very complex with six operators, four operators already offer quite a few ways to create complex sounds. Late FM based synths often only offered four operators because that technology was licensed out by Yamaha to other manufacturers, while they reserved six op FM synthesis for themselves. Some manufacturers, like Casio however, later caught up and managed to create their own variations of FM synthesis. The VZ1, for example, offers a whooping 8 operators. The FB01, however, has 4 sine wave operators and 8 routing options or algorithms. Anyway, let's get back to the FB01's family tree. As I said, the DX9 was the first of the first generation of 4 op FM synths. It was followed up by the slimmed down DX21, the more slimmed down DX27 and DX27S, that themselves were followed up by the even more slimmed down DX100, which was so compact that it came with strap-on buttons so you could shoulder it like a real 80s synth pop star. The FB01 finally was created as a space-saving alternative for home studios. It offers the same 4-op synthesis like the rest of the bunch, but has a very handy multi-mode so you can play a whooping, for the time, 8 patches at once. Let's have a closer look at the unit itself. Starting out on the back, You'll get quarter inch stereo jacks, the always welcome full MIDI trio, and as you can see, no connector for a plug in power supply because Yamaha was kind enough to include a built in power supply. While this usually is a big plus, I really wish they hadn't because mine is humming pretty loudly. On the front, you are greeted by some retro futuristic angular design. There are buttons for basic functions and a 16 character display. As you can't program the FB01 from the front panel, which probably wouldn't be much fun at all, luckily there are a number of editors floating around the web for computers old and new ranging from C64s to the iPad. If you don't feel like jumping through some hoops to create your own sounds though, the FB01's factory sounds are a pretty good collection of typical 4-op FM sounds and there are a ton of patches available you can load into the 96 user banks. As I've already mentioned, the FB01 is 8-part multi-timbral, yet it only has a total of 8 voices, so you can either have one tone with 8 voices or 8 monophonic patches. Luckily though, these 8 voices can also be mixed and matched, so you can have two four voice patches or four two voice patches for example. Another advantage of the multi timbrality is that you can stack tones and through some fiddling create pretty fat multi patches. Once again, I guess this is more than enough talking, let's go to the fun part. The demos mostly consist of stock ROM patches which can be found in banks 3 to 7. We'll start this one out with a nice housey organ patch, because the FBO1 has quite a few neat sounding FM organs, this is J Organ 1. As all kinds of plucked sounds usually sound great in FM, let's listen to Clef, played all the way down for some extra FM nastiness. <laughs> So 
some more plucked strings, a little less aggressive this time around, the harp patch. Bells are usually also a strength of FM since let's start all the way down again on the tube bells. And again, let's move up the scale a bit for some sweet celeste chime bars. Another thing you would probably not expect from this tiny box, it has some substantial FM basses, like this thick hollow bass. And well, the next one probably needs some introduction. If you don't know this bass patch, you'll probably spend the 90s locked away in a dark place. The lately bass, or solid bass as it is known here, used to be everywhere. From <laughs> to, well listen for yourself. Guess what? The FBO one can do pads too. This is a custom patch simply and fittingly called Smooth. Another staple of the FBO one are brass sounds. There are a ton of brass patches, some humble, some more straightforward like this one. So heavy. <laughs> One neat trick you can do thanks to the FBO1's multitemporality is to layer sounds to create thicker and richer patches. Individual layers can be detuned for a bigger sound. In the following case I more or less randomly added some layers to the last sound for a much more aggressive lead sound.
And of course, I can't end this without at least attempting to create a little demo song in multi-mode. It has been a ton of fun doing this actually, as the limitations given resulted in quite a bit of tinkering. I've layered the bass pattern, as I've described in the last demo, added fake delay to the bells through MIDI notes, and of course had to include everyone's favorite bass patch. All sounds are from a single FPO1 in multi-mode, recorded in one go. Enjoy! So there you have it, part 1 of my FM special. The FPO1 used to be the go-to budget option for people who wanted just a little FM in their lives, without breaking the bank, or maxing out shelf space. They used to go way below the 100 mark, but as prices have been rising for pretty much anything since in the last year, the FPO1 now usually floats around 100 euros here in Germany. As the FPO1 was really popular back in the day, there are always quite a few of these hanging around on eBay or classifieds, waiting to be picked up. And hey, before I forget it, for those of you who love sniffing soldering fumes, the FBO1 can be modified to improve the sound. I'll leave you guys a link in the description that it also includes a link to an absolute ton of patches. So, once again, as we've reached the end of the video, I leave you with the usual message of see you soon with another synth. If you're into small affordable synths that run on batteries, you might know what's coming next. <laughs>